Good evening and welcome to St Margaret's on this Thursday evening as we gather from the events of our day to spend this time in prayer and hearing God's word. It's good to welcome Rosemary Gravestock with us in London. And uh, I don't know if Rosemary is aware that Father John is in London at this time visiting family. The Lord be with you. Let me just um, change something because I think I've got a week ahead of myself. Just a sec.
Sorry about that. Uh, I was talking with someone about tomorrow night's service at the time I was setting that up and ended up putting the Friday night responses instead of Thursday. So let's try again. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exalt and give God the glory. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. First of our canticles, the song of joy. Be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. For we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. The day is now past. The night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. We pause in the time of silence to quieten our hearts as we come before God. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world. Delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And our psalm for this evening is Psalm 81. We say by alternate verses. O sing joyfully to God our strength, shout in triumph to the God of Jacob. Make music and beat upon the drum, sound the lute and the melodious harp. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon, and at the full moon of our day of festival. For this was a stable in Israel, and the commandment of God of Jacob, which he laid on Joseph as a solemn charge when he came out of the land of Egypt. I heard a voice that was not my own saying, I eased your shoulders of the burden and your hands were freed from the load. You called to me in, my, in trouble, and I rescued you. I answered you from the secret place of my thunder. I put you into the test at the waters of Meribah. Listen, my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if only you would hear me. There shall be no strange God among you, nor shall you bow down to an alien God. Lord your God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt, open wide your mouth and I will fill it. But my people would not listen to my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I let them into the stubbornness of their hearts to walk according to their own designs. If only my people would listen, if Israel would but walk in my ways, I would soon turn up hand against their adversaries. Those that hate the Lord cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But Israel I would feed with the finest wheat and satisfy you with honey from the rocks. And so we pray. God our Saviour, you sent Jesus into the world of sin and delivered him up to death for us. Kindle in our hearts the same love with which he loved his own to the end, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Lamentations. Chapter 2, beginning at verse 11. My eyes are spent with weeping, my stomach churns. My bile is poured out on the ground because of the destruction of my people. 
because infants and babes faint in the streets of the city. They cry to their mothers, where is bread and wine? As they faint like the wounded in the streets of the city, as their life is poured out on their mother's bosom. What can I say to you, for you? To what compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? To what can I liken you, that I may comfort you, O virgin daughter Zion? For vast as the sea is your ruin, who can heal you? Your prophets have been your false and uh, as your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. They have not exposed your iniquity to restore your fortunes, but have seen oracles for you that are false and misleading. All who pass along the way clap their hands at you. They hiss and wag their heads at daughter Jerusalem. Is this the city that was called the perfection of beauty, the joy of all the earth? All your enemies open their mouths against you. They hiss, they gnash their teeth, they cry, We have devoured her. Ah, this is the day we long for. At last we have seen it. The Lord has done what he purposed. He has carried out his threat as he ordained long ago. He has demolished without pity. He has made the enemy rejoice over you and exalted the might of your foes. Cry aloud to the Lord, O wail of, O wall of daughter Zion, let tears stream down like a torrent day and night. Give rest, give yourself no rest, your eyes no respite. Arise, cry out in the night, at the beginning of the watches, Pour out your heart like water before the Lord, the presence of the Lord. Lift your hands to him for the lives of your children who faint for hunger at the head of every street. Look, O Lord, and consider to whom you have done this. Should women eat their offspring, the children they have borne? Should priest and prophet be killed in the sanctuary of the Lord? The young and the old are lying on the ground in the streets. My young women and my young men have fallen by the sword. On the day of your anger, you have killed them, slaughtering without mercy. You invited my enemies from all around, as if for a day of festival. And on the day of the anger of the Lord, no one escaped or survived. These whom I have borne and reared, my enemy has destroyed. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's worthwhile keeping in mind as we hear lamentations, it's a very heart-wrenching uh, uh, book. It is expressive of the, and records the experience of Jerusalem and Israel in that time of punishment uh, that we hear of in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Sandra's going to read for us now. The New Testament reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 11, verse 55, to chapter 12, verse 11. We read about the plot against Jesus Jesus is anointed at Bethany, and we read about the plot against Lazarus. Verse 55. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus and were asking one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think? Surely he will not come to the festival, will he? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that anyone who knew where Jesus was should let them know so that, so that they might arrest him. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. They gave Jesus a dinner for him. Laz uh, Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at the table with Jesus. 
Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She brought it so that she might keep, keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom, he, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since he, it was on, his, on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Thanks very much, Sandra. You can see that uh, jealousy coming into the hearts of the leaders of the people. And so we come to the second of our canticles, the song of Christ's glory. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Tonight we remember John Baptist Vinay, a parish priest. He's a Roman Catholic priest in the late 1800s. And as we'll hear, he He served in that time during the French Revolution and he's venerated as, as St. John Vanet and is venerated in the Catholic Church as a saint and as the patron saint of parish priests. He's often referred to as the, priest, the parish priest of Ars. Internationally known for his priestly and pastoral work in his parish in Ars, France, because of the radical spiritual transformation of the community and its surrounds, Catholics attribute this to his saintly life. Mortification, persevering ministry in the sacrament of confession, and ardent devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today is his feast day. He was born on the 8th of May, 1786, in the French town of Dardley, and was baptized the same day. He was one of six children, of whom John was the fourth. 
The Vinay's were devout Catholics who helped the poor, and Vinay's paternal grandparents once gave hospitality to Benedict Joseph Labre, the patron saint of the homeless who passed through the region on his pilgrimage. By 1790, the anti-clerical terror phase of the French Revolution forced many loyal priests to hide uh, from the regime in order to carry out the sacraments in their parish, even though to do so had been declared illegal. The Vinays traveled to distant farms to attend masses celebrated on the run realizing that such priests ask their, uh, risk their lives day by day. Vinay began to look upon them as heroes. He received his first communion and catechal instruction in a private home from two nuns whose communities had been destroyed during the revolution. He made his first communion at the age of 13 in a neighbor's kitchen during the Mass, the windows were covered so that the light of the candles could not be seen from outside. And so it's in the, that sort of setting where he, uh, throughout his life, persevered in the face of persecution that John Baptiste Vinay is remembered. So the prayer of a pastor. Heavenly Father, loving shepherd of your people, we thank you for your servant John Baptiste Vinay, who was faithful in the care and nurture of your flock. And we pray that we may know the good of his example and grow into the faithfulness of the stature of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty God, whose beloved Son, for our sake, willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross, give us courage and patience to take up our cross daily and follow him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And tonight we pray for The Diocese of, just bear with me, as you can see, I have misplaced my glasses, and when the print gets small, it gets challenging. The Diocese of Mbali and the Church of the Province of Uganda. We pray for the bishops, clergy, and people of that diocese. In Australia, we pray for the Diocese of Bathurst, Mark Calder, their bishop, for the clergy and people as they serve you there. In our own diocese, we pray for the parish of Brisbane Valley, Loretta Tyler Moss, their parish priest, for your people as they serve you in the communities of Brisbane Valley. In the hospital chaplaincy, we uphold to you, Father Fiona Bennett and volunteers as they minister at Prince Charles Hospital here on the north side of Brisbane and St. Vincent's north side that they would know your wisdom, refreshment and guidance in that ministry. In the schools, we pray for Canterbury College at Waterford, Daniel Walker, their principal, Melissa, their, their chaplain, for Jeff Thomas, the chair of the college council, the members of the college council, the staff and their students. Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for the blessings of this day. We thank you for the street stall and all that was achieved through that. And we give you thanks for the opportunities of bearing witness to Christ in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
And we pray together the evening collect. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest on your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so we come to the close of our time together this evening. Uh, we're mindful that uh, Kay Rees has COVID at the moment and a number of others. And we pray for her speedy recovery. Uh, thank you for uh, supporting prayers for my sister who had surgery yesterday. She, that went well and they're heading home at the moment. So we pray safe travel for them. And I remind you that we have the Friday morning service at Brackenridge at 9.30 tomorrow. So we bid you good night and God bless.